Hi, Steve Aoki. How are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> good. Your first album was Pillow Face and it's Airplane Chronicle. And uh, it was in 2008. And uh, the new one is called Wonderland. So uh, it's been released the 17th of January 2012. And what is different from the last one? Um, the, the last one, I would say, is my mix album. It's basically chronicling the last like three years of my production that I've been holding hostage from the world. Uh, it's entirely features, except for one song. Yeah. Uh, I've heard that you prefer to release just the album instead of releasing one or two singles and then the album. Why? Well, this album is different in that I, it's more about my songwriting rather than writing like a sick club record. I wanted to write an album of music that, that um, like w all the different sounds that influenced me through this period of time. You did a duet with uh, Reverse Cuomo. We can listen to it if you push. Your music sounds uh, really different. Uh, how did you work together? Uh, I remixed a Weezer song and um and that's how we got into uh, to talking mm -hmm. and we did a show together and we started talking there and i told him i was like i'm doing an album and i would love to, for you to be on it and he really loved the remix so he's like you know what i'm gonna try this out after i asked him and he said he would do it the next day i actually wrote the song in my studio specifically for him i need to write a song that i could imagine that he could sing on oh. so i wrote a really catchy hooky chorus section and then like you know obviously you know the verse area and I sent it to him I was like what do you think and two days later he sent back the vocals on it so that was the first draft of it and then like over the course of a few months we I just re-edited it and, and made and finished it up How did you compose your music? When you go into the studio, how do you work? I'll come up with some ideas when I'm on the road, and I do have this, like, you know, I'll work off my computer, but I need to have the best environment for me to be the most creative. Mm -hmm. Come With Me, Dead Meat was one of my oldest songs it's on the album. I started that record in 07, and I finished it last year. You know, I have a lot of ideas, you know, like there's, like, you could say that there's like 30 or 40 different ideas or loops or sections or you know things that you've written you don't know where or how to place them into a song sometimes like you can nail on the head and sometimes it takes a long time okay and why did you name a uh, track Steve Jobs you're an Apple fan yeah I'm an Apple big time Apple supporter um, I literally buy like 10 computers a year <laughs> like a lot because I, I mean I've did mock as a business and we have 18 full-time employees there at the, at the company, so everyone's using Apple's there. This song is all about, it's like a very um, video game driven song. It's like, yeah. sounds like, it's like 8-bit. Yeah, like you know? Sonic. Yeah. Right, exactly. So for whatever reason, I connected the old video games with the kind of evolution of the computer and the evolution of Apple. Mm. And I just thought of Steve Jobs. So I was like, you know, let's, let's give him some love here. So, uh, we'll talk about movies now, because your remix from uh, Pursuit of Happiness from Kid Cudi has been chosen to be in the soundtrack for uh, Project X. So, we can launch it. It's a thug on. It's a build up. <laughs> uh, how does it feel to be chosen for a soundtrack? Um, yeah, that was, that was pretty epic. You know, it's a perfect sure. party song <laughs> and, it's, and the perfect party movie. <laughs> so it's just, you know, when you have a song that fits visually with, with anything and it's like, it's a good meshing of the two, it's a great feeling, you know? You did a lot of remix and collaboration uh, with Afrojack too. There is a, it's a bonus track on your album. Uh, it seems that you never stop working. Um, we can see the remix over here on the third. The vocals are by Miss Palmer, yes. And there is a day where you're 
you're off, you stop working for a day or not? Uh, 2011 was probably my busiest year in the studio. I, I was around averaging about 250 gigs on the road, but I'd have 100 days at home, right? You know, I love working with my friends. This is one of my homies. Like, I love, I love Nick to death. He came to my house, stayed with me for a week, and we wrote, we were all no one for Nervo, uh, that song. We wrote No Beef. We wrote, like, a bunch, actually a couple other songs that aren't out yet. So, um, and we're going back in the studio again this year. It's just, it's fun to work with your friends. You know, you got, like, good chemistry going. Of course, I love trying stuff out with new people. Um, my, my last collaboration with Tiesto, I think, is a really good example of two different worlds coming together and having the community of EDM supporting the song. And can you tell us what is uh, Steve Aoki's signature on songs? Uh, well, when it comes to club songs, it's always about raising the bar on the maximal side of the sound. <laughs> I want to crack the threshold so people will lose their minds. That's the, the idea. And if, if I could do that and I'm successful, then, then it's a successful song to me. We see uh, the Bloody Beatruts, so we can listen it with uh, this one. Yeah. It's warp. Here you can see. <laughs> And how your collaboration started with uh, Bloody Beat Roots? I remember hearing um, some Bloody Beat Roots remixes. And it was just like exactly the kind of thing that I wanted to release on Denmark. So um, when we signed them, we became really close with Bob. And you know, I really wanted to support him, and I supported his vision and sound and direction. And I came to Basana de Grappa, where they're from, yeah. stayed with them for a week. We did Rifoki, which is our last names, Rifo and Aoki. <laughs> and um, at the same time, we did Warp 1.9 and Warp 7.7. Yeah. So I was in his, in his studio, which is the basement of his mom's house. You know uh, David Guetta? Right. Yeah, uh, you can listen to his song here. It's the most known, this one. Do you like this song? And what do you think of his work? Because it's like uh, Euro dance or this kind of uh, style. And um, you, you want to work with him? Um, well, first of all, I'm, I, I love David as a friend. He's a good guy. And, and, uh, and um, when I do hear his music, I like it. I mean, when I hear his songs, they're like incredibly um, catchy. He's the one artist from the dance world that's become a pop star. Yeah. If anyone has done it, it's him. He did it, and he's, I give him a lot of respect for doing that. In uh, one of your interviews, I heard that uh, the best show of your life was with this artist, if you... How was it, the uh, show? Okay, um, I saw Daft Punk play Coachella 2007. I saw them again, you know, but that show was their pyramid show. So they played on top of a pyramid and, and it was like all LEDs and just, you know, lights everywhere. And it was the Alive mix, which was just mind altering. It, it reinvigorated my music, my love for dance music. And you want to work with them? Try to do a collaboration? Did you try to reach them? I never, I never thought of myself nowhere near the <laughs> level of Daft Punk. Daft Punk are gods to me. <laughs> they're like, uh, they're, they're the godfathers. So for me to think like, oh, I want to do a collaboration with Daft Punk, I would never even think about that. Um, I want you to listen to um, two artists. The first one is Kavinsky with his song Night Call. You can listen f here. It was in the, beer, in the soundtrack for Drive. What do you think of Kavinsky? 
his music. It's more it's 80s style of electro, no? Yeah, I love Kavinsky. Yeah. I love everything he's done. Um, when I think of it, like I think of uh, Scarface too. <laughs> like he's like he should be scoring more movies. And the second one is only 17. It's called Madion. It's been revealed by this, yeah. and you can listen to his last song just here. Remix from Martin Solveig, The Night House, and he remixed it. Only 17. It's incredible. See, like, here's a great example of a kid um, that probably has a computer and speakers, and he's able to, you know, create sounds that the whole world is listening to. I yeah. love that. And uh, uh, so we saw Skrylex here. And uh, on your song Lady D, uh, I've heard some dubstep stuff right. on the chorus you can play here. No, just with the... And what do you think about this craze on dubstep right now? Dance music in America is like kind of bubbling right now and dance music's been going on for a long time. It's uh, You know, and Electro was the same kind of thing happening, and I think in 07 when Justice's album came out and they were touring, and there was a huge craze for Electro. Dubstep is kind of like taking on that space. So uh, it's exciting to see it, to, to feel it. You know, it's all about continuing it. And artists like Skrillex can do that because an artist like Skrillex will always reinvent the sound. He's the one that can literally create a whole new culture by his music. And would you like to do a collaboration with metal or rock band? As critics did it with Korn? Um, I mean, on my album, I did a collaboration with uh, the guitarist from The Exploited and the drummer from D. Krausen. To me, like two amazing seminal punk bands from the 80s. So that was, that was a big deal. To do that, uh, you know, I've already been working with certain people that I'm I'm not unveiling yet until the time is right. And by the way, you, you work with uh, Travis Barker, is a drummer from Bleak 182. So how was it to work with a punk rock drummer? Um, this was the second song I worked with. Yeah, you did Misfits. Uh, I did Misfits yeah. with him on my on his album, and then on this one, I wanted to do something that was kind of a brand new um, to all of us, to Kid Cudi, to Travis and myself. I wrote that song with him in mind because like, even the drop, there's sections, open sections for him to do his thing, his fills. Yeah. Or did you compose the uh, title uh, Living My Love with LMFO? We, we can listen to their best hit in France. Yeah, Party Rock on 10. <laughs> It wasn't Super Bowl. <laughs> With Madonna. Man, those guys are just funny, man. <laughs> um, Fu is a very good friend of mine. I, I've known Fu for a long time. He can create pop out of anything. He's just like a, he's, he's a brain. He's really intelligent. And before you, you before you go, can you tell us what you think of this song? French. Yeah, it's French. Oh, it's big, it's big hit in France. So it's King V and over here. Yeah. It's the most known in France. It's a very big hit. It's called Zaz and it's, the track is Je veux, I want. I like this better. You like this better? You will, you will buy the album of Zaz? Yeah, this, sound, this reminds me of like, like Lana Del Rey or something. Yeah, Lana Del Rey? Yeah, <laughs> but then again, I don't really know what she sounds like. I only know <laughs> a couple of songs. So thank you, Steve. Oh, yeah, thanks, man. Have a nice day in France. Yeah.